On its the economy, it's a double delight. A double delight for the economy. The CPI inflation for August came in lower than expected, while the industrial output for July came in higher than expected. What more can you ask? The August CPI was up 6.83% versus the CNBC TV18 poll of 7.08%. Likewise, July IIP came in at 5.7%. That was better than our poll of 5.2%. Incidentally, that 57 is, I think, the best in nine months, best, best since last November. Now, what does all this mean for the economy? Are there some upgrades to growth forecasts and downgrades to inflation fears? Let's ask our guest today, Shantanu Sen Gupta, the economist from Goldman Sachs, India. Shantanu, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, that really is the first question. Uh, looking at the CPI number, which has come in like a good 27 basis points below, uh, you know, the consensus forecast. Is there a chance that you guys will start revising your inflation forecast lower for the year? Yeah, good morning, Lata. Uh, not really. We were already 20 basis points below consensus. We had a 69 uh, okay. in, in terms of our forecast for this month, uh, okay. it's coming at 6.8. Uh, you know, we are comfortable with our quarterly forecast of 6.7% uh, for the current quarter. We think there's a slight bit of downside risk to that, in fact, uh, given what the tracking estimate for uh, inflation is for the month of September. I mean, it's only the first 10 days of September, but given how vegetable prices have behaved, uh, we think that the reading could be sub 5.5%. Uh, given what we have seen in the first 10 uh, days of September. Uh, and thereafter, we expect inflation to be in the five and a half uh, kind of handle going into the next quarter. Uh, okay. on, the, on the growth front... Uh, no, I'll, the come to the growth in, I'll, I'll come to the growth in just a minute. But to complete the inflation point, uh, what is your full year uh, estimate? Any changes to that? I think RBI stands at 54 we haven't made any change to the full year estimate as well. We were uh, at five and a half. Uh, we are staying there. Uh, see, the nature of vegetable prices is such that it, it goes up very sharply. It's extremely volatile. It comes down also very sharply. I think the concerns, and we can get into it later, will be more on what we are seeing in rice and pulses. Mm. Uh, they are longer cycle crops. Obviously, uh, you, you cannot just correct them every quarter with higher supply. Mm. Uh, India also happens to be the largest exporter of rice, and hence it will feed mm. into global prices as well. On pulses, we are the largest producer, largest consumer, and hence you can't really import your way out of this. Uh, so if the Kharif production overall is poor, you'll probably have rice and uh, pulses inflation elevated into the next quarter. It still doesn't impact your headline uh, in, a, in a big way. We still think that it's going to be sub-6% in the 55 uh, kind of range for the for the next couple of quarters. Okay. Uh, Shantanu, the LPG prices perhaps are not getting reflected here. Do they make an impact actually on CPI at all? Is it an element? And uh, if you extrapolate that closer to elections, there could be more. So do you think there can be downside surprises from fuel? Um you know, I think that what will balance out is the fact that oil prices already are at $90, dollars uh, yeah. a barrel. Uh, so, in fact, on the other side, there, there was market chatter about excise duty cuts, which we think will be extremely difficult in this kind of an environment. Mm -hmm. if, if you're getting a food supply shock uh, and monetary policy finds it difficult to deal with it, the burden of this will fall on fiscal policy. And mm -hmm. hence, you, know, you, you will look for more of subsidies uh, and mm -hmm. transfer payments coming from the government side. So I think mm -hmm. that will be the balance as you get into the election cycle uh, early into next year. No, that's a fair point. Uh, uh, you have only that much money and you can't keep giving, uh, you know, uh, excise cuts in fuel as well as uh, food transfers uh, or income transfers. Uh, the government may not be in that context. Uh, have you all thought over the government's borrowing program itself? I mean, the Zekina borrowing program is yet to be announced. Maybe this is a premature question, but uh, uh, there could be early elections. After all, there is an early uh, uh, or, or an unscheduled parliamentary session called. There are guesses that uh, this is in preparation for elections. So, borrowing program, is there a, are you betting it can be higher than expected? I think they have been extremely prudent uh, and conservative, I would say, in terms of fiscal management over the last uh, few years, uh, despite the higher fiscal deficits that you saw in the du during COVID. Uh, 
they have stuck to the path of fiscal consolidation. So I think that sticking to the path of fiscal con consolidation remains. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are challenges that are emerging in the second half of the fiscal year for overall fisc. As I said, mm -hmm. you, you have this transfer payment versus and, and food subsidies going through. Uh, your corporate taxes are running slightly below what was estimated. You are sort of uh, hitting the seasonality that you had pre-pandemic and not really what you have seen uh, in terms of the seasonal variations post-pandemic. Uh, you've got some room in terms of the RBI's extra dividend transfers. And, and in our view, it's imperative that they stick to the asset sales or the disinvestment program uh, mm. for uh, for the fiscal uh, for the borrowing program to really go through smoothly and not have extra borrowing into the year end also they have you know t bills can manage the the program uh, into okay. q4 if at all required so we are not really baking in a higher uh, borrowing uh, number in terms of bonds at this stage Okay. Uh, no, you touched the uh, right point uh, in terms of tax collections. Uh, uh, we will know, of course, we will be much wiser after the September 15th advance tax payments come through. But uh, as of uh, the uh, uh, August numbers that were released, uh, well, I think the July numbers were released, corporate taxes were running at 2.8% over last year. And uh, the asking rate from the budget estimates is 10.5%. So really tracking way below uh, at least estimates, but uh, let's see. We, we would know only after advanced taxes. Now let me come to growth. IIP numbers were good. PMI numbers have been good, even if August was a shade below uh, July numbers. So uh, what's the growth picture looking like? Is it looking b brighter than one expected? Actually, we have a slightly more tepid uh, forecast for the current quarter. Um, uh, IIP has been an upside surprise compared to consensus. Uh, even even with that, given the amount of weather-related disturbances that you've seen in the economy in the current quarter, uh, and given that you've already front-loaded a lot of your capital expenditure from the government front, we think that the fiscal impulse going into the current quarter will be uh, will be lower than the previous uh, quarter. Uh, and given the weather-related disturbances also, we are baking in about a 5% uh, growth for the current quarter. Uh, we mm. jump back uh, to about 7% in the next quarter, though. It's just okay. given the disturbances that we have, we have, uh, we have a more tepid growth forecast. So we, we were at 7.8. We think we mm. come down to about 5% and get back to around 7%. So on average, okay. you're doing about 6% growth for the second half of the calendar year. Uh, so, for the full year, uh, we don't get to RBI 6.5. Where do you stand? We have a 6.1% for the full year, uh, fiscal okay. year 24. Okay. Well, uh, that again uh, is a number which uh, is uh, uh, vulnerable to weather as everything else is. Uh, now, let me come to the Reserve Bank liquidity policy. Uh, they went hugely tight on August 10th uh, with the ICRR. The ICR, ICRR has been removed but I think for the past few days when I checked, I think the call rate is still hugging the MSF rate. I mean, it's above six and a half. Do you think RBI will keep the liquidity tight or will it relent because inflation is uh, lower than expected? So, um, I, 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 think, I think the first uh, measure of tightening liquidity was the fact that, you know, the 2000 rupee notes uh, uh, deposits had increased uh, liquidity and therefore they wanted to tighten it from there. Uh, our sense is that the RBI wants to remain slightly hawkish, given the fact that headline inflation is still above the 2 to 6% band that they're targeting. I think they will also take a lot of comfort from the fact that core inflation has come in below 5%. Uh, and it's not just core goods, which we have been predicting will come down uh, over the course of this year, but also core services inflation, which is lower. Uh, given even even with that comfort, given what we've discussed on rice and pulses earlier, uh, we think that they'll want to keep liquidity slightly tighter so that the overnight hovers between the repo and the um, and the MSF. But I don't think they would want it at the MSF, which is what the market was getting it to uh, when liquidity mm. became really really tight. So somewhere in the region of uh, some somewhere between the repo and the MSF is where we think overnight will remain. Okay. Well, today it is actually above the MSF rate. The call rate is going at 6.8 as I speak. And the uh, trep, trepatite repo is also going at 6.75. Uh, 
Uh, well, for those of you uh, who, are, who don't care for the money markets much, uh, the call market, call rate is the one-day rate that banks pay when they borrow from one another to meet their CRR requirements. Uh, that, that is the one-day rate. It, it should ideally be at where the repo rate is, six and a half. Uh, but, uh, you know, because the Reserve Bank has kept things tight uh, it, and liquidity will get tighten, uh, tighter as we get to September 14th and 15th because money is taken out of the banking system and paid to the government. So the tightness is to be expected. Nevertheless, uh, it is uh, in the shorter run a little tight. Now, here's another question, uh, Shantru, which is not really very immediate. But have you all paid attention to that IMEEEC? Well, I got all kicked. Uh, India, Middle East... Uh, and Europe getting connected by rail and ceiling and perhaps a new trade route, uh, something very historic like Vasco da Gama's route uh, is perhaps being explored. Do you think this makes a very big difference to the medium term India growth story? Uh, Lata, I think the, the G20 was very well hosted uh, by India. Cross-regional trade collaboration uh, always contributes to long-term uh, growth. Our potential growth estimate was around 6% in the early part of this decade. Uh, with the with the kind of reforms that have gone through, especially on financialization, uh, the IBC, uh, GST uh, as the indirect tax reform, uh, we think that potential growth growth for India is rising uh, slowly and will go towards a six and a half kind of uh, range by the end of this decade. Uh, any kind of cross regional collaboration which opens up newer supply chains, brings overall logistics costs down, uh, will only aid to that. Okay. Well, I know we are counting our chickens before they hatch, but uh, it looks like uh, another new chapter in terms of international trade. Uh, uh, out of time, uh, Sanjeev, uh, but uh, uh, Shantanu, but in any case, uh, we are going to get the US CPI number. So we will have much to discuss when we meet next. Thank you very much, Shantanu Sengupta, for joining us with your details and your opinion on inflation and growth. We have to wrap up on Bazaar. On that positive note, uh, and uh, just hand it over to Chartbusters, which has a gloomy picture to tackle as far as at least mid-caps are concerned.